Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. So May was a very, very good reading month for me and I actually read 12 whole books. Very impressed with myself, cannot lie. <laughs> and it was also very good just in terms of quality. I really enjoyed everything I read and I'm just very, very excited to talk to you about them all a bit today. So first up was Cool for the Summer by Dahlia Adler. So I read an advanced copy of this one through NetGalley and I really, really enjoyed this one. This is kind of pitched as a by Grease retelling and we follow a main character who has just had this lovely summer romance with a girl and now she's back to school. The boy she's always had a crush on is finally taking interest in her and everything seems to be going great until this same girl that she had her summer romance with shows up at school and this just complicates things as our main character is forced to confront her feelings and to kind of confront the idea that she may not be straight and it wasn't just the summer weird thing that happened and I really really enjoyed this one this one's such like a good summer romance summer rom-com and I really liked that it doesn't have this narrative of having to identify any which way our main character kind of is still working on this towards the end and she really struggles with it throughout this kind of having to settle on a label idea and I really really liked this journey and I thought it was very well done. What I also really just adored about this book was the character development and journey that Lara went on, that's her main character, and this is kind of in reference to what I've just said about not having to choose a label but also for her just kind of coming into herself and out of her best friend's shadow. I thought that it was just so well done and so important to read and I really really enjoyed just seeing her character grow and accept herself as well and just I really really appreciated this very personal journey she went on and another thing I loved about this book is that it is very sex positive and I love sex positive YA. I think it's so important and I think this book does a very good job of having sex positivity, showing it to be this normal healthy thing that teenagers do and keeping it appropriate for a target audience and it's a thin line to walk but I think it was done very very well here. The only thing I would say about this book that I wasn't a huge fan of is that I didn't think anything outside of Lara herself, her character, was developed as much as it should be. So this goes for like side characters and friendships and also just like some side plots that are introduced. I thought a lot of this could have been further developed and bulked up a little bit but overall I did very much enjoy it. It's sweet and it's fun and it's just a nice light summer read. Next up was The King's Men by Nora Sakovic. So I finished off my reread of the All For The Game series. I reread all of these via audiobook. This series is one of my favourites and it was just so lovely to be back with these characters again. This book is definitely the strongest in the series. I love it so much. It's so very, very good. This is definitely not a series I would recommend to everyone, however. It is very heavy in terms of content. And it's just one of those ones that seems to be that people either adore it with everything in them or absolutely detest it. Like I've never seen any like really in between reactions to it. So I'm hesitant to always just recommend it, but personally I adore it. So the first book in this trilogy, The Foxhole Court, follows Neil Jostin who is on the run. However, when he gets an offer from Palmetto State University to join their exe team, exe being this kind of made up bastardized sport that exists in this world. It's meant to be a cross between lacrosse but with the violence of ice hockey. He accepts this offer despite knowing that it's really not a very clever idea considering he's on the run but Exy's really the only thing he's got to live for and he figures you know what why not have a few weeks of getting to be this and to do this and have something to live for and he joins and we get some fun team dynamics, some very over-the-top dramatic things happening. I can't even explain it. It's a lot but it's so fun. This is where my love of found family, my love of sports themed dynamics all comes into play. It's queer, we've got a queer romance, a central romance and you, re you only really see that properly in the third book though it's all hinted at and kind of slow development begins in the earlier two books and yes I just love this series. It is one of my favourites. It's a comfort read to me which is 
wild to say because some of the content is, as I've said, very, very heavy, but I love it. <laughs> Next up, I read Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe, and I also just really really loved this one. This follows a main character called Lily who is living in San Francisco in the 1950s. She's Chinese American and we really see a lot of her kind of culture and what it mean, means to be Chinese American at this time, particularly with the Red Scare and this, this fear of communism so rampant in the States. And we also follow Lily exploring the lesbian bar scene and kind of accepting her own identity as a lesbian and what this means in the kind of social historical context that she's living in and it is all just so interesting to read about but also really fun so yes I just really really enjoyed reading this one I loved Lily's development and her relationship as well with Kath who's a girl that she meets through the lesbian bar scene and it's all so good and these like scenes in the lesbian bars and with all the other lesbians just he felt so good to read and I just loved it so 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 much and I also really really loved reading at the end the author's note where Melinda Lowe talks about the, the kind of real historical inspiration for this and just her kind of writing process and all of that and some of the sources she lists that she had used. Guys a book that has a bibliography. I didn't think I'd love that as much as I do but I'm very very excited to do some of my own research because I really did enjoy this. I found it so interesting and I find queer history in general really interesting so it's been something I have been wanting to look into more so definitely we'll be doing that but this was such a good kind of place to start and so interesting to read as well and entertaining and I really really enjoyed it. My only criticism uh, with this one would be that the ending was very rushed it seemed and I would have liked that kind of stretched out and developed a bit more and it just it seemed to come across very quick and be over like that and it was like where's the rest of it if you know what I mean. Um, and that's a problem I've kind of found with other two Melinda Lowe books I've read is that she does such an amazing job of building it up and then it's over and <laughs> you don't get a proper like similarly paced ending so that would be my criticism of that but overall it is fantastic really really enjoyed it really really recommend it very very good <laughs> Next up I read It Goes Like This by Neil Moreland and this is a new favourite for me. I gave it five stars. I absolutely just adored it. So this follows a queer pop group who have, have been broken up for a year but have to reunite for a charity benefit to help their hometown. And so we follow four point of views of each of these different uh, bandmates, well former bandmates, and them kind of dealing with the breakup and what this had meant for them and reconciling with each other and rebuilding these friendships, these relationships, because above all, above being a band, they were all friends first and there was also a romantic relationship and when the band fell apart so did all of that and I loved this book, I really really did. It's just, it, it feels so like, like a warm hug, <laughs> honestly, I really 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 enjoyed reading it. I think that characters were all just so distinct in their point of views and well developed and there was never a time when I got to a point of view and I was like oh I don't want to read this one can we get back to whoever I I was so eager to read from them all I really love them all and oh, the romance so soft the second chances and all of that and it's not an easy path but it's done so well and you really deal with all of these issues that they had had previously and so good and I also really loved that this deals with fan culture and kind of what being a fan can feel like and this community you can build from it and all of that it did it really really well and it really just reminded me of why I love music why I love the musicians I do and it made me miss concerts and I've only been to one in my entire life but I need to go to another one sometime soon because just the way that this one was written was so good <laughs> But yes, just overall, just the love that these characters had for each other was so 
clear it came through the page so well that I just couldn't help loving them all too and their relationships again so strong they had such love for each other and oh, loved it and yes we have got our sapphic relationship we I believe that they're both lesbians the only one is called a lesbian on page and we we have also got a bi main character and a non-binary pan character so what's most a queer rep there and I'm just so in love with this just all of it and the romantic relationship between these two girls as well was just so good and oh my god I could talk about it forever it really has made me like miss fandom and just fan culture and being part of something oh, it's so damn good I really really loved it so next up I read Trouble Girls by Juliette Lynn Rubin. So this is a, a queer YA Me Too reimagining of Velma and Louise is how it's pitched. It's, it's a sapphic thriller and we follow two girls who are setting off on a road trip together just some time away, they're best friends and one night of violence really take, turns this trip into something a lot darker and they end up on the run. And this book deals very very heavily with sexual assault and rape culture and a kind of broken system that protects its perpetrators and not its victims so be very aware of that it is heavy in terms of content um however i think that this heaviness was very well offset by having these girls fighting back and the kind of positivity that came from that and i really really enjoyed it for me what really stood out was this kind of aesthetic and atmosphere and writing that it had it i it took me a long time to figure out how to describe it for writing my review so i'm just actually going to read a little bit of that because I, I cannot describe it very well this not just calls it the aesthetic of riverdale which i read as existing in this in-between space of vintage aesthetic infused with modern vibrancy and pop culture it has this blistering rundown and forgotten vibe that feels almost like falling into a dreamscape at times complemented by sharp writing and characters and the piercing urgency of conversations surrounding sexual assault and i actually included a line from the book that i think very aptly describes this kind of aesthetic which is this is purgatory played to a soundtrack of pop music this like dark grungy end of days almost feeling with this bright vibrancy of pop music and Lux, our kind of love interest, her candy pink hair and all of these like vibrant things that they are doing as well and I just really enjoyed this blend. I think it worked very very well and what I really appreciated about this book was that the characters are so unapologetically messy. They make so many mistakes and it works so well in the context of the book and it just it is so good and it felt very authentic because you know no one would really know what to do in the situation that these girls find themselves in never mind teenagers who are kind of on their own for the first time and dealing with so many other things and things keeping them in place back home even as they say you know we're going to California and we're gonna run away there and you know that this logic doesn't work and they know as well but you need something to keep you going and I really really just enjoyed it. I would say that there were elements that needed more development such as Lux, our love interest character in the relationship and also that it kind of lost its momentum at times and I would have liked it to have not done that because it's a thriller and I wanted to be more on the edge of my seat um, and I didn't really feel that and that all kind of led to the ending falling a bit of flat as well because there wasn't just enough tension to get me there if you know what I mean but overall did very much enjoy it appreciated the kind of sensitivity it had to handle some very difficult conversations as well next up I read In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland and the last time I tried to describe this book I took forever to describe the plot so we're gonna have to do something very quick here um, this is a YA fantasy, it's a standalone and we follow a main character called Rovin and she's a blood mage and she's been hiding this, keeping it a secret because in her world blood mages have to be officially registered and her father wasn't hiding so she really just doesn't want to kind of expose herself and expose them and be brought into the system. 
but she has to use her magic to save her friend's life and so she is and she's brought to the palace and there she begins learning more about her power she befriends some people and she's assigned a guardian and this is the other thing she really wanted to avoid by not revealing herself by not being registered is a guardian is this undead spirit assigned to blood mages that really has the power to control them and also it's just a bit freaky having a dead guy walking about with you all the time and she wasn't feeling it so she's assigned this guardian and she befriends and begins a romantic relationship with a princess and also befriends Jaffa who's also royalty I wouldn't know what their title would be though but we really get this like friendship and found family vibes and it's polyamorous we have a relationship between Robin and this princess but also Robin and her guardian eventually and you really explore some like life and death magic it's really interesting in the magic system in the world building and so unique as well I've not read anything with a system like this very very interesting to read and yes just very queer very found family vibes all of that very fun to read it's so like constant the plot it's very very addicting to read because there's always something happening um I would say that this book I wouldn't say it suffered for being a standalone but I would have liked more I felt that there were aspects that could have been stretched out a bit more and developed a bit more um a lot of what I was saying you know the action being so fast it was it was so fast it was probably too fast like too easy some of the action and I would have also liked some more development on these relationships I thought that they went from being Rovan being very very distrustful and suspicious to best pals or romantically involved very quickly and it just meant that because this fine family this love she has for them all is her main motivator it didn't feel very strong because this foundation of the relationships wasn't as strong so I just would have liked to have seen some more time taken to develop them and I don't know if that would mean just being a longer standalone or even split into a duology but it w could have benefited from just more but overall it was still very very good did very much enjoy it I would very recommend if you're looking for some queer fantasy you've got a pansexual main character as well and just polyamorous you don't get that a lot in YA but it was so just fun to read really really enjoyed it absolute chaotic queerness love it <laughs> next up was the henna wars by adipa jagirdar so i read this and honey and issues guide to fake dating by the same author for a vlog which i'll link down below but this is a y contemporary and we follow a main character called nishat who comes out to her family as a lesbian and is told nope not possible for a muslim girl for a bengali girl however this is kind of complicated by her growing feelings for flavia a girl at her school who's running a rival henna business for their school enterprise project thing going on and so we follow Nishat and Flavia's relationship and just what this all means for Nishat and this kind of intersection of her identities of being Muslim and of being lesbian all of this as well as the cultural appropriation of Flavia running a henna business when this is not her culture and also just a celebration of Nishat's culture as a Bengali and all the food and the dresses and there's a wedding right at the start and you get everything it's a lot a lot of fun to read and I just I this book has been so hyped and it's so well deserved it's so good I really just adored reading this I absolutely flew through it and I think that Adiva Jagudar and this is true for Hani Nishu as well is very good at balancing light-hearted rom-com kind of moments with also exploring some more heavy t topics heavy themes and you really do deal with you know cultural appropriation as i've said that kind of homophobia the racism that these characters face but it never feels dark and dour and all of that it is ultimately a happy story with happy characters even if they go through some tough things and I just I, I really enjoy it I'm so glad that this exists and I am so excited to read more from this author in the future because this was just incredible 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 
So yes, next up is Hany and Issue's Guide to Fake Dating, also by Adiba Jagardar. And much of what I said for the Henna War stands for this one, in terms of this kind of perfect balance of lighthearted and heavy themes without ever becoming too heavy and just amazing writing, amazing characters. Um, this one follows a dual perspective. It's a rom-com. We follow Hani, who's the popular girl, who's really just seems to have everything going right for her. But when she comes out to her friends as bisexual, they don't believe her because they've never seen her in a relationship with a girl. So she blurts out that she is dating Ishu. And Ishu is the only other South Asian girl in their year. And she is a bit of a loner. She's very determined with her work, very focused and intense. And she originally she doesn't want any part of this fake dating scheme that Hani proposes but she does want to be a head girl and you need to be popular to be a head girl so they do propose this fake dating scheme that will benefit the both of them and I just really loved reading this book so much I think that the the two perspectives are so distinct right from the beginning it's so just well written you've got our lovely sunshine Hani and grumpy grumpy issue and I adored reading from them both so much and it worked so well in this rom-com setting this fake dating it's so fun to read again like the henna wars it does deal with some heavier topics some racism some homophobia but it is overall just joyful and so good and fun I really loved reading it and I just I love it, it so just good that part of accepting yourself and your identity and not squashing down parts of yourself to be more palatable to others especially when that means your sexuality your culture these things are so intrinsically part of you and it's such a powerful message and so just well written well conveyed here and i cannot recommend it enough i really adored this one i gave both of these books five stars because they were so good. <laughs> Next up are the books that I read for my 48 hour reading vlog. So the first of these is Never Kiss Your Roommate by Feline Harms. This is a YA contemporary kind of romance novel as well. It's set in a boarding school and we have this enemies to lovers relationship between new girl Evelyn and her roommate Noelle. And you've got some lovely friendships, lots and lots of queer characters. And you've got a slight thriller element as well with this kind of anonymous school blog, uh, like gossip blog. And I thought this was a lot of fun. It's like corny and cliche and all of that in like the best way possible. And it also, it reads like fan fiction. And I mean that in the highest of compliments. This book is not going to be for everyone because of this corniness, this cliche. But for me, I really loved it. I find it like nostalgic and refreshing at the same time because this book was originally published on Wattpad and it has a lot of the kind of tropes and structures that you get there that I was very familiar with from my, my young teenage years on Wattpad. But also just refreshing and new because it's queer. And also it deals very heavily with our main character Evelyn kind of accepting her sexuality and her identity and I really enjoyed this plotline and this development that she went through. I thought it was very very well done and relatable as well. In terms of the actual like, quality of it, it is a bit more debatable. The plot is a bit all over the place, it's very over the top at times and dramatic and Again, it's these things that I'm familiar with because of Wattpad that I look past in those books but don't really in a published book. But because, I don't know, I've just got this nostalgia for this one, I was okay with that. But again, it won't be for everyone. And I also want to point out that uh, Noelle, our love interest, is black. She's one of only very, very, very few characters of colour in this book. And her character does fall into some racist stereotypes. Um, she's like the mean black girl, she is over sexualized. There's a few other things and although a lot of this, you know, it turns out to be untrue, it, I would have liked to have seen more done to kind of address that she falls into these stereotypes and that everyone in school was so quick to put her in these boxes. And I thought that a bit more could have been done to kind of 
challenge these ideas. I was disappointed that it didn't do that and I did overall enjoy it, I just want to highlight that. And there, I mean, there's some other like technical issues I had with it, I don't want to go into detail here though, but overall I did enjoy it, but be aware of that if you're picking it up. And then next up was the Love Song of Ivy K Harlow by Hannah Moskowitz. So this one I read in almost one sitting. I really, really enjoyed it. This is a new adult contemporary novel and we follow Andy, who is hopelessly in love with her best friend Ivy. And Andy is very much accepted that she's never going to get with Ivy, at least not anytime soon, because Ivy is this kind of one night stand kind of girl and she doesn't do relationships, never mind serious ones. But when she picks up the same girl twice, which she never does, Andy has to start beginning to confront some feelings, especially as Ivy's relationship begins looking more like a relationship and something more serious. And I really, really enjoyed a lot of the narrative of this and this kind of idea of being the side character, this witness to your own story. It's, and that's really how Andy feels and just accepting that maybe what you thought would happen will not happen and these kind of preconceived ideas of what your life should look like and all of that aren't necessarily true or what's best for you and I find, I find that so interesting to read and very well done. These are very again messy characters and they make a lot of mistakes and they're not perfect and I really enjoy reading that so so much and it was just done so well here and I loved this all these dynamics between our main characters you've got so many sapphics you've got just such good things but you've also got unhealthy relationships and they are dealt with and so interesting to read i really enjoyed this one more than i thought i would and i definitely recommend it if you are looking for kind of messy sapphics new adult and not perhaps a love story but definitely a contemporary and a kind of coming into yourself, coming of age kind of story. I thought I just did all of this very very well and I definitely recommend it. Next up also for that vlog I read Meet Cute Diary by Emery Lee. So this is a trans rom-com, it's just come out very recently and this follows Noah, a trans teenager who writes the Meet Cute Diary blog. This is a collection of trans happily ever afters inspired by their meet cutes and when this blog is exposed as fiction he kind of comes up with this fake dating plan to save the blog by being able to write about his own real relationship and real happily ever after for the blog although of course it is fake but he has his plans of it becoming real you know having a proper fake dating moment and this book i'm i'm still unsure how to feel about it because i very much appreciated the narrative that the author chose and it is the one that I kind of expected and I think it was done very very well and this kind of idea of not being able to plan your life and plan how you're going to get your happily ever after and who with and all of that and again it's kind of a similar theme to the love song of Ivy K Harlow but done in a very different way and I just I, I really did enjoy reading it I flew through it the writing style was so easy to just sink into however it there was this kind of moment where there's a shift in this book and we really get into what is our proper narrative and I I would say that for me this shift came a bit too late I, we spent a lot of time building up to it and I just I didn't enjoy that building up moment that well because although I knew what was coming I still just it was frustrating to read really. I can't talk about it without being major spoilers but it was just like can we move it on a bit please because I just wasn't happy reading that part. That wasn't the fun rom-com moments I was expecting when I picked up this book which really just brings me to my expectations probably ruined this book. Well not ruined it, I didn't hate it but maybe made my experience of reading it less enjoyable. Um, and I think it's one that I would like to pick up in the future without these expectations, knowing instead what I should be expecting. And it's just, it's difficult because I wanted to love this so much. I thought this was going to be five stars, incredible, so just joyful and fun. And I just didn't find it that joyful, really, when the author 
promotes it as just being full, full, full of joy. I just didn't think it was as joyful as I was expecting and and that's not a fault really of the book or anything like that but it was just different from my expectations and it took me a minute to kind of um, accept that my expectations weren't what I was going to get. I don't know. It's a difficult one. I'm still not certain how I feel about it but I would still recommend it. Um, don't take me being unsure about it as thinking it's terrible or anything like that. It's definitely one I still encourage you to pick up for yourself. But just as with any book, try and not let your expectations taint your reading experience because I think that's what's happened here and I'm very upset about it. And the final book I read in May was The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimons. This was another arc and I started this just at the very end of my 48 hour reading vlog and I love this one. I actually, I also gave it five stars. I had four five star reads last month. Very impressed. So this is another trans story. This is a romance and we follow a main character called Spencer who goes to a new school following some transphobic bullying at his old one. And at his new school he goes stealth, he doesn't make it clear anywhere that he's trans, he's just passing for being a cis boy and when he's there things seem to be going great, you know, he's joined the soccer team and he's friends with his teammates and there's a romance beginning between him and another teammate. However, when a transphobic law forces his coach to bench him after they discover the F on his birth certificate, he is kind of forced to choose between existing on the sidelines of his own life or fighting to be able to play and I really 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 love this book um I think from this description it sounds like there's a lot more of this you know activi activism and fighting against this regulations and all of that but it really is at its heart a romance you know this this kind of uh forcing him off the team it doesn't come till about halfway through you really do focus on a romance and I loved it so much it was just so sweet it is the kind of joy that I was really wanting and looking for and just done so 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 well it, and it was really interesting as well reading a book about a trans person who is in the kind of process of transitioning and passing when so many of the stories that we do get are very early on or coming out or any of that when you had someone who is already very comfortable in his identity already been in the active process of transitioning with hormones and all of that for years and it's just so good and joyful and the romance as well this kind of soccer team and all of that um our love interest is from a very very strict christian family and so he's dealing with his own things and them not being able to accept that he is gay so he's just not coming out because it's too much of a risk but also just having feelings for our main character and what all that means and it's so good they just had the best relationship that I am truly just in love with them they were so good together I still don't really know how to talk about it but I loved that this book so 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 much I just did not want to put it down at all it just it was so good and joyful and positive and sweet and romantic and everything I'd want and I really really highly recommend you pick this one up and yes that is the last book I read so that's the end of the video as always I'll have links to all of these books on Goodreads down below for reviews and also just the book itself if you want to add it to your TBR or know more of my thoughts of my social media and my bookshop affiliate if you fancy support me or checking me out elsewhere outside of YouTube and yes thank you very very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon